Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of ED Quick Tips. My name is Frankie Parra and I'm the ED Educator. I'm Ashley Wheeler and I'm the Trauma Resource Nurse. And I'm Dr. Levitt with the Trauma ICU team. In the episode today, we're going to talk about ED thoracotomy. We're going to talk about the indications, the contraindications, and the cautions when we perform this procedure. Also, we will discuss about the equipment that is needed, uh, where to find the equipment in the trauma bay, some of the procedural steps that are critical for this procedure, including uh, internal defibrillation and when to, where to find those paddles. So an ED thoracotomy is a somewhat controversial procedure, uh, but is most commonly indicated in patients who present after a penetrating trauma with uh, loss of pulses, but still with signs of life on presentation to the ER. Goals of the ED thoracotomy are to uh, relieve tamponade or to help with the perfusing volume by cross-climbing the aorta and to allow better perfusion of the, of the brain and the uh, upper extremities. While you have doing ED thoracotomy, you can also do internal cardiac massage or internal defibrillation. Uh, some of the contraindications or cautions in patients who have communicable diseases, you are putting the surgeon and the uh, operators at risk of uh, bloodborne pathogens and exposure to the blood and bodily fluids, injuring themselves, whether from the surgical instruments, rib fractures. The other contraindication or thing to be cognizant of is uh, the futility of the procedure, which is why it is often not performed in the setting of blood trauma. Each practice management guidelines examined ED thoracotomy and the overall survival and were able to demonstrate that uh, survival's greatest in a penetrating thoracic trauma that show up pulseless with signs of life. The overall survival declines when the penetrating trauma shows up with no signs of life or is extra thoracic or uh, in the setting of blunt trauma. So the type of patient that an ED thoracotomy might be indicated on is an 18 year old female that has a gunshot to the left chest. With EMS, the patient is hypotensive with a systolic of 80s. The patient is unresponsive to one liter of fluids. When the patient arrives to the trauma bay, she loses a pulse. CPR is then initiated. Uh, while CPR is going on, the trauma surgeons are placing bilateral chest tubes. After two rounds of CPR, a pulse is regained and the attending is then requesting a thoracotomy. So the ED thoracotomy has been indicated by the physician. I think it's important that we understand that all PPE should be applied prior to the initiation of the trauma. Uh, the beta dye and the suction junker should be readily available at the head of the bed. Uh, that's important for them in case that they encounter some blood once they enter the thoracic cavity. The most important feature of this procedure is that we get them the right tray. The right tray is located in door 33 and it's clearly known or visualized by the rib spreader, the, the rib spreader symbol. That's the big piece of this equipment. Also, I think it's important that we get the internal defibrillator paddles that are located in, in door 34. In case that once they get into the thoracic cavity, they have to defibrillate internally. Once the decision has been made to do an ED thoracotomy, the nurse will gather the supplies. The chest will be splash prepped with betadine, and you'll begin with the with a 10 blade scalpel making an a anterior lateral incision. Typically, you go in the fifth intercostal space, which is just below the nipple line, or in women in the inframammary line, starting just to the left of the sternum and carrying along the rib space to the uh, mid-axillary line. Once the, that incision has been made, scissors can then be used to open down through the intercostals to open up the pleural cavity. That aspect of the incision should be on the superior aspect of the inferior rib to avoid the uh, neurovascular bundle. Once that once the pleural cavity has been entered, the, the rib shredder then, can then be inserted into that rib space and then opened to uh, expose the, the thoracic cavity. When the tray is open, uh, be sure to look for the rib spreader because that's going to be a, an important part of the, uh, the uh, tool set. Uh, once the chest is open, the lung will be moved out of the way and the first thing to do is open up the pericardium in a longitudinal aspect of, to avoid damaging the phrenic nerve to check for any injury to the, to the heart and, or to relieve cardiac tamponade. From that point, uh, the aorta will be cross-clamped or digital pressure can be applied over the aorta to help with perfusion pressure to the brain and to help with resuscitation. At this point, open cardiac massage can be, can be done or if necessary, the uh, defibrillation paddles can be opened in the case that those are needed. The decision will then be made whether to proceed on to the OR or whether to discontinue treatment. 
So the ED thoracotomy is taking place. If the patient is a little bit of trouble once they get into the thoracic cavity, and they're going to be fib. The next step is going to be more than likely going to be to internal defibrillate. Uh, the container comes with an, with an adapter. The remaining components of the or the tray are sterile, so keep it, keep it as sterile as possible. Make sure you do this quickly as well, and connect the adapter to a regular light pack. You simply push a button and release it. Snap it in. Grab the adapter located inside of the tray and line it up accordingly. It'll pull, make sure that it's secure and tight. The machine, it has a security feature that doesn't allow you to go past the recommended dose. The recommended dose is 10 to 50 joules per defibrillation. If you attempt to go past 50, the machine simply just stops you. It's also worth noting that you have to use the defibrillating button on the paddles itself. So remember, the inside of the tray is sterile. Typical is precision kind of does this for you, but I just want to kind of show you how you would apply or insert the paddles inside of the handle. We have the adult version and then we have the pediatric version. The adult version, you simply have to push and twist, secure. The pediatric version, it's got a little thread on it. You simply put it in, but you still secure it in place. Thanks for watching this episode of Quick Tips. As always, if you have any questions, we're here to help.